Hi, it's Payam here from Nisha's Rush. We're going to talk about declined cases, um, the type of mix of why people get declined. That could be uh, affordability, straight up stuff like affordability, like credit issues. Um, then we go a little bit more complicated and a little bit more mysterious property types. That's a big one. You know, you're talking about, you know, near shops next to commercials. It could be, um, we talk about ex-local authority flats. We're talking about cladding issues. We then talk about specific type of mortgages people get declined on because of the way criteria works. That could be buy-to-let mortgages, HMO mortgages, specialist mortgages, limited company mortgages. And, uh, you know, we run through some of the real reasons and what happens when you get declined? What happens when the lender to get suspicious why are people getting declined um, some of the feedback that I've had on some of the videos where people have been declined so we run through all of that stuff um, I think it's useful I have done a video like this last year and it did quite well uh, and I think it's really useful information it's definitely worth a watch if you're looking to go for a mortgage take care and I'll catch you on the video all right so you've gone to a uh, mortgage lender uh, or via broker and you've been declined now why have you been declined let's run through some of the main reasons why people get declined the first is um, uh, affordability uh, you've said you earn X amount they've looked at your documentation and they've you know said no actually you you're on a you're you're not earning as much or they're not taking as much of the bonus commission additional income into account um, a lot of those cases get declined but they're not what I call it, they're a soft decline because they generally, they get declined based on the loan amount that you want to borrow, but they may come back and go, well, you can't borrow 250,000 pounds, you can borrow, I don't know, 200K based on your income. So it's not a full decline, you know, it's basically uh, whoever that did the affordability um, did not do, do it in accordance with the lender's criteria. So that's what I call a soft decline and it's all affordability based. And that's um, the majority of the cases because what's happened through the pandemic is all the lenders have changed their criteria. So some of them will take, I don't know, 50% of in, uh, additional income, 60% of additional income. Um, they may not take benefits, for example. So, so, you know, although you receive child benefits, as an example, although you receive child benefit, if your child is over the age of 11, a lot of lenders will not include that as part of your income okay so it's only for children for younger children so things like that often get missed okay and when they go to application only then when they get reviewed um, and I and I've, and I've talked about this in other videos you know an agreement in principle you know yes they'll run a affordability check yes they'll do a credit check a soft credit or a hard credit check but no one's really looking at it unless you're going via broker uh, and if you're doing it and if the broker's doing their job correctly, they should really be looking at all of this stuff because, you know, what goes through the bank statements often is different to what applicants put in on their application form. They generally round up the figures. They generally miss commitments. They generally, you know, don't think, oh, right, I've got a student loan. They don't think about the student loan. Do you have a student loan or not? That affects affordability. People think, oh, it's a student loan, but I've got £25,000 in a student loan. But that's a student loan. Yes, it's a loan. It's a commitment. It comes out of your pay slip. Um, some lenders take into account pensions, for example. Um, others don't. You know, others think it's a good thing. So all of those things will add um, a layer of uh, complexity to the affordability assessment. So that's one phase. The second one is um, credit profile, okay? Um, now, I've, I've talked about this, you know, you should be running your credit checks before uh, you go for a mortgage application or you look to, to get mortgages just to see what the state of play is, okay? Um, often, you know, a lot of mobile phones, directories, things like that are missed. People move addresses, they don't move their address, they get you know, correspondents going to the old address, they don't even know until they go to a mortgage lender and the mortgage lender declines them because they've had, I don't know, a default or, a, or, or late payments. Um, so a lot of adverse things. Now, it's not the end of the world if you've had problems, okay? It's identifying that problem and then obviously speaking to an expert or, you know, you can do your own research and identifying the lender that will that problem will fit the criteria on I'll give you an example a lot of lenders if you have had a, a default um, and it's under 250 pounds some of them will ignore it okay some of them will just insist that it's just paid okay um, others will you know it's a straight decline so understanding that criteria late payments mispayments 
mobile phone list payments. Some will decline it, some will decline you on it, others will ignore it. Uh, then we're going to more serious sort of county court judgments, defaults. When was it registered? Has it been satisfied? Has it not been satisfied? Is it part of a multiple other things that are on your file? Okay. Often I get a client who tells me about one default, but they don't tell me about the eight CCJs and defaults they've got behind the scene. They just conveniently sort of forget those. So a credit report will identify all of that and will save you a lot of time and, and hassle, really. So these are straightforward, come on, these are all straightforward stuff, okay? Let's get to more juicier stuff, okay? Uh, the next one uh, that I've had a lot of in the last um, couple of months, property types, okay? A lot of declines off the back of unsuitable property. So let me tell you what is, what is an unsuitable property um, for some lenders. One, a property that's got next to a commercial element, maybe an off license, maybe a chippy, maybe a restaurant, um, because that's deemed to be um, unsociable hours. You know, a lot of off licenses are open till late. Okay, restaurants are open till late. Chippies are open till late. There could be, you know, uh, lots of people hanging around. And the lenders say that's not a desirable area. They don't want to put a charge. Just because they have to repossess you, it'll be harder to sell and harder to mortgage. OK, um, shops above flats, uh, sorry, flats above shops, you know, commercial entities, kebab shops, you know, restaurants again, off licenses again, laundrettes, hair salon, nail salon, all of that sort of stuff. Um, a lot of lenders will decline those type of properties, whether it's for residential and buy to let. Um, we can then look at right to buy. So ex local authority or local authority flats, if it's up to four or five stories, they're generally okay. However, if you go beyond that, um, there are certain rules. One, a lot of lenders do not like lending on them above five. Some will insist they must have a lift. And I've come across this now where, say you're on the fifth floor, but the, the lift only goes to the fourth floor. Some lenders will have an issue with that. They will not do it. Um, others, if it's, you know, the uh, concrete blocks, they'll have a problem with that. A lot of problem. A lot of lenders will decline those. Um, deck access, that's the balcony access outside. A lot of uh, uh, local authority flats have got these balcony accesses where the doors on the right hand side or left hand side, they don't like those, they will decline those, some lenders. Again, um, then we're talking about, you know, next to a pub, things like that, declined. Uh, Non-standard construction type, concrete, steel frames, again, problematic. Annexes to the side, to the back. Um, again, a lot of lenders, especially if it's a buy to let, they'll have, they'll be worried that you're going to do it as a HMO and you're going to, you're not going to do it as one entity and you're going to do it as a, you know, uh, you're going to split them up without splitting them up. So property types, and that's the one that's difficult. Okay, I, I, I'll tell you what. If you've got an adverse problem, if you've got a credit problem, there are multiple lenders that will deal with it. If you have got an affordability issue we can you know r roughly work out what it is so it's in our control when you're dealing with property it's in the control of the surveyors okay and un unfortunately i mean what we can do is go by our experience of oh we did one here or we did that there um but generally it, the lenders will leave it up to the surveyors okay and the surveyors will then deem it to be suitable or not so it is very much depending on what surveyor you get and you know whether he's had a whether he's had a fight with his missus the night before or not, you know, it, it really is, it really is um, uh, dependent on that surveyor. Obviously on the lenders as well, there are certain lenders that you do not want to go near if it's a non-standard construction type. There are other lenders that are quite lenient and it's hit and miss. When you're talking about right to buy, for example, there are lenders that you do not want to go because they've got a 70% occupancy rule, whereby essentially what they will say is if it's a block of uh, council, if you're buying a council house, you know, they want 70 to 80% of that block to be owner occupied, which means they have bought that, you know, they're owners themselves, they're not owned by the council. Others don't have a rule like that. Um, and that's, that's, that's massive, you know, uh, there's not too many right to buy properties out there that have got such a high occupancy rate. So that's uh, the lender being sneaky, essentially saying, look, we don't want to say we don't want to do right to buys, we don't want to say we don't want to do ex local authority flats, because we don't want it to be to get in the bad press. However, we'll put this rule behind the scene, which essentially says we don't want to lend, okay? So there are lenders like that. So you've got to watch out around that. Now, let's talk about a little bit more complicated stuff. Let's talk about, I, I, I'll give you an example, guys. Um, I had, if you go to our Google reviews on the niche advice, 
um, for our existing clients or, or our interactions. So Google reviews, niche advice, okay? You will see lots and lots of four and five star reviews, fantastic. However, you will see a couple of reviews from people who have not actually used us, but they had a conversation with me, um, sort of, you know, an inquiry. So these guys have phoned up and have said, yes, um, I've got a new job, um, and guess what? My salary has gone from 20000 to 45000 so I've doubled my salary, and it's with a small company, and, um, you know, and it's recent, and I want to get a mortgage. And I've been quite blunt with them and said, uh, no, I don't think you can do that. I think the lenders will get suspicious around your income. I can't see you've got a history of that sort of income, that sort of earnings. I can't see, you know, your company is, you know, it's a small company, which means lenders will be more suspicious. It's a different thing if you're working for a three-man company than working for Tesco's, for example, or you're working for John Lewis, or you're looking for working for Microsoft. You know, it's different because they will trust their processes they trust their HR department they trust their tax returns they'll trust all of that stuff okay so when and, and I've had I've had an inquiry like that and I've said no I don't think you can do it yeah but there's nothing wrong with it yes there is nothing wrong with it in theory okay but you're coming to me for it for some advice and I've told you that I don't think I can I don't think I can do it or I don't think it's a, it's a um, a viable way of getting a mortgage you might be able to get a mortgage elsewhere it's just not by me I don't think that's a that's something the lenders will will like so they've immediately gone on the reviews and they've actually put oh this guy's useless he's been really bad you know and, and i'm just trying to tell you guys because i get calls like this all the time where people have gone elsewhere they've gone to the lender oh such and such lender doesn't need a minimum income such and such lender doesn't need any okay so let's go through this rule okay um there are plenty of lenders out there okay that do not and i i'll name some of them Nationwide, Halifax, Santander, Accord. These lenders do not have a minimum time for employment. Okay? Sounds good. So you just got a new job. Go with them. Yeah? However, what you don't know is, or what you should know is, yes, they don't have a minimum time for employment, but it needs to be a viable mortgage. What I mean by that is, you can't be not earning anything, don't have a history of uh, working, uh, working full stop. And if you do have a history of working, your income has been low, and that could be verified by your P60 and your current year um, uh, pay slips. Okay, and all of a sudden, go to these lenders. They don't have a minimum time for employment, but go in and go right. I was on 20k. I'm now on 80. Okay, because. Yes, they've got that rule. If you, That rule's really for people that are changing jobs, they're in similar sectors, they're moving things around, you know, um, they're may, maybe with larger companies, they've proven, here's my CV, by the way, this is what I was doing beforehand, okay? You can see a projection, you can see what they're doing. I was in IT security, I'm now going to this, I've become a manager, I've now been headhunted by such company, and I'm starting my salary there. We've actually got lenders that will give you a mortgage before you start, so I did one, not long ago for a nurse moving from London to Birmingham, getting a job in Birmingham uh, in two months' time. And as long as it's within three months, they will do it. But you see what the difference is? It's with NHS. They're a nurse. They're qualified. They can show history of it, right? Now, my argument to that gentleman who has left the review on, on Google was, I don't, think, I don't think that's a viable solution. I don't think that's a way... Um, the lender will accept that and I'm not doing it for the sake of just being a miserable git I'm doing it because of experience that I've had of so many cases being rejected whether it's my cases so sometimes in the past we've thought well it's borderline let's go with it um, or there's more likely l clients that phone me constantly where they've had this problem where they've been told or they've read on the website or they've been told by a broker or they've been told someone down the pub that oh yeah such such lender they don't need um minimum time for employment so let's go there what you don't want to do is start doing that and then get rejected here rejected there rejected there and what they will do is they will put that on on a database and we'll talk about how what happens when you get rejected under suspicious circumstances okay so come on guys bit of common sense there if that is the case if you've got a new job if you have your you know doubled your income or your income has increased considerably um, I think the more prudent and most sensible way is prove that you're in that job for a period okay whether that's three six months whatever it is okay 
prove that you're in that job, demonstrate why you have been, you know, you've been getting this this amount more money maybe you were working in pizza hut and getting i don't know 15 grand a year and now you're on 45000 pounds a year however you've been doing a degree on the side okay or you've been doing you've 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 doing you've got some course and now you're in i don't know whatever whatever your sector is you need to demonstrate that okay it's not just good enough to say i was earning this and well here's my pay slip i've got 2 months pay slip well it doesn't matter um, often lenders will look beyond all of that okay it will go into their compliance department they will double check things so that's a big one okay so what happens when a lender um, gets suspicious and declines your case or doesn't want to do your case okay well you need to find out what the reason is often I get calls to, from clients that say look we don't know what the reasons are now the reason could be one of those things that I've explained if it's a credit report if it's a credit issue they will tell you, they'll just say you have not passed the credit uh, score or credit profile. So it's pretty straightforward. If it's affordability, they will tell you, you can't get 250K, however, you can get, I don't know, um, 150, whatever, whatever, whatever that may be, okay? So again, you'll know about that. When they say to you they don't know or they can't tell you, what that means is they're suspicious of your case more than more often than not so they don't they don't want to tell you and they've got the right not to tell you it's because maybe they think your income something's not right with your income something's not right with your deposit something's not right with your your background something's not right with what you put on the application something's not right so what happens when is something's not right something looks wrong to them what they will do is they'll decline you and then they'll put your name and details and the details of the application on a shared database that all the lenders or a lot of the lenders will uh, will subscribe to so what that means is you get declined by one lender you go to another lender you get an agreement in principle no problem because the agreement in principle doesn't check against that data application goes in sometimes a survey gets done okay again because some lenders will just book a survey straight away so the clients thinking oh yeah it's all great you know such a slight lender they didn't know what they were talking about that broker didn't know what they're talking about that lenders useless they go down this route and then all of a sudden the underwriter checks against the system and there's a system called hunter national hunter and guess what you're showing on there and sometimes you could say could not verify income so what that means to the lender is we've had an application we couldn't verify their income we've declined it so that lender the new lender will go oh something's not right automatic decline now if they are not sure they could ask you for some more information some more verification but making sure and they will double check they'll double check your application and say did you notify us about getting declined by this lender because often they ask the question have you been declined in the last 12 months or so did you tell us that this had gone on. If you hadn't, they get more suspicious. Why didn't you tell us about this? Um, so it's important. Uh, and uh, another comment, I had a comment mm, day before yesterday. Payam, you're trying to make a meal out of things. There was a there was a guy, it was a, a video about AIPs and getting the agreement and principles and how you know some agreement and principles are not the worth the paper they're written on. And there was a client who uh, it wasn't a client actually. It was a chap who wrote under one of the comments. Is I think it was. I, I got I managed to get my uh, mortgage offered and it was very straightforward it was very seamless and you're just trying to make a meal out of things to get commission out of people scare people essentially and I've said you know I didn't want to sort of I said well good luck you know you've got your you've got your mortgage but I'm not here to sort of scare people we've got thousands of people to um, to get you know watch my videos and we've got lots of business out there I'm telling you the reality of things okay the reality is I get calls all the time I wished some of those people would put videos out there and say, look, Piam did help me, this was happened. Now you can probably see those on the reviews that we get now, but I'm certainly not trying to scare people. And there are lots of people that get agreement in principles and lots of people get mortgages, okay? So I'm not here to sort of, you know, try to milk it. But what, what I will say is these are everyday live things that happen, okay? Property types, affordability, credit issues, disclosure, um, at another one, client had a criminal record, did not disclose it to the lender, lender one, lender two, lender three, all declined it, okay? And his argument was, 
Well, no one asked me about this on their form. Come on, that's a get out, okay? That's a excuse, it's a really bad excuse. If you've got a criminal record or you've been struck off by your company as a company director for any, whatever reason, anything like that, you should be taking it upon yourself and disclosing that, whether it's to the broker, whether it's to the lender, because it will have a fundamental impact on underwriting and outcome of the case. And if you tell someone up front, they are aware of it and they can research the lenders that will accept this and can disclose it up front, okay? A lot of the declines get done because of disclosure, not knowing what your credit report looked like, not disclosing the right income, not disclosing the right property type. Has it got cladding? Oh, another one. Oh my God, cladding. Big problem with cladding. Has it got EWS1 form, okay? So if you've got cladding, the lenders are asking for um, a form um, to verify that basically the property is safe. Now, it's an absolute nightmare at the moment because none of the freeholders want to pay for it. Management companies are charging for it. It's a, it's, a, it's a minefield. But what I would say is, look, if you, have, if you live in an apartment, you need to walk outside, have a look, and say, does it have any cladding? Or ask your managing agent, does it have any cladding? Or take some photographs and send it to the broker. The broker may be able to tell you whether it's got cladding or not. But a lot of cladding declines. There are some lenders that, even if you've got the EWS1 form, uh, will not accept it. What they want is some specific wording. Um, Santander, I think, is one of them. I've had, oh, honestly, guys, cladding, uh, again, is, is, is a big one at the moment. So if you're sitting in a flat right now, um, even if the government has said, look, you know, it's below X stories and you don't need cladding, a lot of the lenders have got their own criteria. They don't care what the government says. They're taking charge on the property and they want them to have the reassurance that that property is safe, um, especially if it's a buy to or residential, it doesn't really matter. So, um, yeah, big one on, on property types and again, cladding. Um, what else have we got declines for? Uh, uh, when you're looking at buy to let, okay, again, um, a lot of declines happen on buy to lets on customers' uh, circumstances. So uh, the portfolios in the background, for example, they might be heavily geared up. You remember those YouTube videos you will see, oh, buy this property, raise money, pull all your money out, buy another property, raise money, pull your money out, you'll be a millionaire, you'll have 30 properties in a year. Right, great. What happens when you start wanting to refinance some of those properties and the gearings and the lender um, uh, the, the, the way the rental calculations are done, not on the property that you're looking to remortgage, because if you've got four or more, they'll do a background check on all your properties. And what happens if two of them are empty? What happens if the rentals are not that great? What happens if you're geared up heavily on the, on the loan to values? Okay, All of those things have an impact on the first property that you're looking to buy. So they'll look at your background property, uh, property portfolio. So a lot of things like that. Now, there are lenders that are lenient on the background property, but they may have high rates. There are lenders that have got very good rates, but are very, very strict. They may have a no minimum income on a normal buy to let, but because you're a portfolio landlord, they may have a £30,000 minimum income you may have. So again, a lot of declines or, or moving things around and, and, and getting things around that. HMOs, ha whether it's got a license, doesn't have a license, um, whether it's got a communal room or not, again, those things are, uh, we, we, we see a lot of those um, type of properties. Uh, lending to limited companies, is it going to be, you know, we get a lot of um, social housing stuff, okay, oh, I mean, honestly, I don't like, I, I personally bat a lot of that stuff away now, whereby they're renting out to a company and that company is re uh, renting it to the local authority and the local authority is putting homeless people in there, whether they're vulnerable clients, whether they're assisted living, all of that sort of stuff. There's a big market out there, but there's lots of criteria and a lot of people get declined because of the not understanding the, the, the criteria around us. Um, so yeah, that's really uh, some of the declines that we are seeing and getting. Trust me guys, it is happening. I'm not, like that chap said, trying to milk it here. Um, uh, you know, maybe it's just a business mix that we get, but certainly um, a lot happening. God, you know, at the end of the day, we're doing a lot of mortgages in terms of, you know, a lot, a lot more people are getting through, but these are some of the things to watch out for. So if you are one of these people, okay, um, certainly get in touch with a broker, a whole of the market broker, uh, because they will have access to lots of lenders and they will know lots of lenders criteria and they can discuss that most important thing is disclosure make sure you're disclosing everything to that broker or that lender direct
All the best. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.